Welcome to Game Show Mania, the show that puts Game Show Network to shame with its brand new content schedule. If you have any game shows you want me to take a look at, leave them in the comments. This is the chamber. Once someone enters, there is no turning back. Tonight, within these steel walls, human endurance will be taken to its very limits. Participants will be subjected to unbearable environments and incredible physical stress. Scorching heat, sub-zero cold, and hurricane force winds. If anyone can make it through all seven levels, they could walk away with more than $100,000. Will it be worth it? Welcome back to the chamber. So you probably saw my last video on the chair where I hinted at this game show existing before. And if you hadn't, what what are you what are you do what are you doing here? Watch watch the video. Watch the dang video, gosh dang it. Well, I finally got around to talking about it, and oh boy, it's a lot to talk about. While ABC aired the chair in 2002, Fox saw what they were doing and said, It's for me? Not even kidding. When ABC won rights to air the chair after being pitched to Fox, Mike Darnell, the head of alternative programming at Fox, came up with the idea of the chamber, while also awkwardly side-eyeing Fear Factor at the same time. Don't worry, I'll talk about the messiness more later, cause it indeed gets messier. Just get ready for me to say, just like the chair, often. The chamber was a joint venture between Fox and Dick Clark Productions that also liked the chair, aired in 2002, but on Fox. I had a vague knowledge of it growing up but never watched it because I assumed it was a sort of copycat of the chair with some extra spice, but oh, oh was I mistaken. The bases of the chamber work similar to the chair in which your vitals are monitored while you essentially answer trivia questions, but instead of keeping the extracurricular activities in between questions, the entire game takes place inside the title chamber which actively causes distress and discomfort to contestants while they try to answer trivia questions. The trivia questions are your basic general affair. You can get a question where you're asked what state starts with an N, and you can also get a question asking who went to the moon in 1984. The whole appeal for this game was the chamber. The chamber was this metal structure with multiple ways of causing distress that contestants were brought into. What could they possibly have? Well, for one, there's actually more than one chamber. There's a hot chamber and a cold chamber. What's the difference in what you're experiencing? Well, it's time for a chamber fight. Fight! In this corner, we have the hot chamber. Subjected to increasingly hotter temperatures, eventually to over 150 degrees Fahrenheit. You get earthquake movement, electrical conceptions designed to contract your muscles, a foul loader being blasted in your face over, over, over an open flame by hurricane jets, and just for the added suffering, oops, there goes the oxygen levels. And in the other corner, we have the cold chamber. Subjected to increasingly colder temperatures, eventually getting below negative 10 degrees Fahrenheit, you get water jets that spray the contestant intermittently. You get the old favorite wind jets, electric convulsions and vibrations, and for added depravity, ice jets. Cause these producers don't give a flying fuck about you. Both of these sound absolutely awful, but in my opinion, the cold chamber sounds like absolute hell and dangerous. Like you can really freeze to death in there, shit. This show was originally going to be hosted by Matt Vergazian, who has broadcast for many different MLB teams, most recently for the Los Angeles Angels. But as he got his first look at the premise, he immediately noped the fuck out of disgust. In his place, we get Rich Schwartz. A sports announcer, maybe? He's inoffensive, has very basic dialogue with contestants, and generally makes no impression other than, holy shit, you're so fucking boring. Getting, getting warm in there at all? <laughs> Not yet. All right, I'll give you 500 bucks if you want to stop right here. <laughs> I don't think so. Not enough, is it? No, it isn't. All right. I, Robot, couldn't come up with more generic hosts even if they tried.
So the rules of the game are as follows. Before the proper chamber starts, contestants are given physicals where resting heart rate, pulse, and other vital information was collected, similar to the chair. Unlike the chair, however, these numbers were not only just to see if contestants would be medically fit for the chamber, but they were also used in a random equation to find a number called the stress coefficient that is all too important to the rules, but we'll talk about that later. Before the actual, actual game starts, there's a preliminary round. Two contestants are brought up and asked to stare lovingly in each other's eyes. These two lovers, made always man and woman for some reason, are put against each other by fate and the rules, are given a multi-answer question, and starting from either one, they must give a valid answer until one of the couple says a wrong answer. If their lover gets one more correct answer, they will earn a point for that question. If not, then the next question is asked. This intense hot dating session is ended by the first person who gets two points. And their jilted love gets to watch them walk off, able to go off to the promise of money in the chamber, while they just stand there. They really just stand there and just watch them go and don't even get the second chance. They get nothing. No chamber, no money. Messy breakups are so disheartening. Anyway. <clears throat> We're finally at the chamber, which is either in cold mode or hot mode chosen at random before going in. Before they start, contestants have to sign a release form. Yes, literally as they get strapped in, they have to sign a release form or take a $500 bribe from the host. Spoiler, no one ever took the bribe. The contestants then get brought into the chamber and the torture begins. There are seven one minute rounds with questions being asked while the contestant is being blasted by the effects of the chamber. For every correct answer, the contestant earns $1,000 in their bank. As each round is completed, the effects get increased every round and new hazards are introduced to make the contestant as miserable as possible. Getting a question wrong doesn't hurt the contestant, but if they get two wrong answers in a row, the chamber shuts down and the game ends with the player going home with half of what they earned in their bank. Not answering a question in a certain amount of time also counts as a wrong answer, which means you can also end your game by doing so. The player can also voluntarily quit the game if the chamber effects become too much by saying the safe word, STOP THE CHAMBER. Your bank still gets half though, cause we ain't shit. Remember the vitals that were taken before? This is where they come in. Obviously torturing people on TV for a loving audience is dangerous, so the equation generated safe stress coefficient is your limit of torture. If your current danger coefficient exceeds the safety danger coefficient for 20 consecutive seconds, the chamber is shut down and your bank is, that's right, half. But for your safety though, you win the chamber by finishing stage seven without stopping the chamber early. Your prize is whatever you earned in your bank. Though, if you were able to answer over 25 questions right, your final score would be triple and the chamber they were in were going to be retired to be replaced with something even worse. So yeah, this is essentially torture yourself for our amusement for money. Not even kidding. Players look to be in intense discomfort and pain, and the people at home just watch it up laughing. Well, more so the premiere than another episode, as people kind of left in droves after that. I know I complained about the hard stoppers in the chair not being effective enough, but this might be pushing it too far in the opposite direction. Some contestants were able to handle the situations better and only faded out because they got the questions wrong. But some other ones, dear Jesus, they look like they are absolutely miserable. Between the random muscle contractions and disorientation that makes it hard to even get your head on straight, to the absolutely torturous mixture of water spraying and ice shards and a below zero environment, while you have to think about who was Time Man of the Year in 2000, like why is this a thing? It's cruel and unusual treatment of human beings in the chase of the almighty dollar. I feel so bad for these people. 
but holy shit, why did I watch every episode intently for this review? It's a guilty pleasure type thing though, cause holy hell this game is a walking dumpster fire, even just in the game. Not even counting the messy stuff that I'll cover later. For one, the on-screen displays are super inconsistent. Either they show up way too late or just not at all. Besides Blandy Blanderson hosting the game, there is another voice reading out the questions and a female voice reading out the stages and other conditions of the chamber. King in the 2001 movie, The Mummy Returns, The Rock, or Goldberg. The Rock! Correct. Level three complete. Chamber level four to commence in 10 seconds. Till episode three, where the question guy's voice is out and Rick <sighs> takes over that duty for some reason. In Alice in Wonderland, who is the partner of Tweedledee? Danger Zone. It doesn't matter. Both of them read questions slow, and in a game where time is of the essence, would drive you even more insane than you already are. You can't even trust the rules of this game to hold themselves accountable, and most games when answering questions, a last name or first name alone would suffice. But for the poor contestant here, she got a question wrong for just using the last name. And whoops, that strike two in a row sucks for you. What American astronaut went into space at age 76? Crap, I know this. Oh my god. Glenn, Glenn, Glenn Armstrong. Incorrect. Chamber to shut down in three. What do you mean incorrect? In the show's history, only one badass of a man named Scott Brown made it through all seven rounds and in the dreaded cold chamber at that. Though he didn't answer 25 questions, so no extra bonus money for him. He wasn't left hanging, however, as on top of the money he earned in his bank, he also earned an all expenses paid vacation to the hospital room to be treated for hypothermia. Yes, he actually put his life in danger trying to get through the fucking chamber. Luckily for Fox though, he signed a consent form at the beginning of the game, so they weren't held liable for Scott Brown took the show, Dick Clark Productions, and Fox to court, and got an additional cash settlement of $100,000. Fox do legal good. Oh ho ho, that isn't even the only court case the show was involved with. Remember Fox taking inspiration from the chair to create the chamber? Well, they were sued for that by ABC, claiming alleged similarities between the two programs you don't say. Fox, in response, humbly took this loss in court and ha <laughs> ha no, they countersued, claiming ABC sent spies on their set what? to steal their ideas and what the fuck is happening. The fate of both lawsuits dropped. Not done being absolutely awful, Fox completely sped up production on the chamber just so it could beat the chair in premiering. And you know what? They did. By two days. You would think this is the Steelers and Ravens fighting just by how petty this is. And then years later, it came out that Darnell did indeed make the chamber just because he couldn't get rights to the chair like everyone and their mothers couldn't already tell. Whew. The concept, the messiness on Bruh. and off the set. This is a game show hall of famer for all the wrong reasons. But holy hell was this fun to research and watch. The concept is cruel, but it honestly reminds me of another recently famous property called... Squid Games. Yeah, situation isn't exactly alike, but people choosing to deliberately put themselves at harm for money? Yeah, that's pretty similar. And it's not a good game show, not in the slightest, but I highly recommend everyone watch the release episodes. It's honestly worth the cringe. Six episodes were taped, but only three were aired, but luckily enough, they're available to be watched on YouTube. Special shout out to the YouTube channel, Game Show Temple Archives, where you can watch full episodes. Go ahead and give them a follow. I give this show two lawsuits out of five.